so in this next section, uh, we're going to spend some time talking about some different classes of functions uh, that are particularly important in mathematics. And we're going to start with uh, which should hopefully be a review definitely from Algebra 2, but also from the investigation uh, that we've already completed, and that's with quadratic functions. So we remember that the shape of a quadratic function is called a parabola, and that's just this u-shape that we have for quadratic functions. And as we know, quadratic functions with this word here, quadratic, I know I'm talking about polynomials with degree 2. So I want a polynomial of degree 2. So my general form is just to say ax squared plus bx, whoops, just bx, plus c. And of course, my coefficients have to be real numbers, and my leading coefficient cannot be zero, right? If my leading coefficient was zero, then I wouldn't have a quadratic function, I would just have a linear function. We're also going to call these coefficients parameters, and parameters are going to help determine the shape of our quadratic functions. And actually, this is true of any function, right? Any, the parameters of any function are going to influence the shape, uh, and I guess the orientation as well, right, of any particular function. So we're going to look at quadratic functions in three different ways, depending on what we're trying to use it for and depending on the information we're given. And the first way we're going to look at it is just standard form, and that's equivalent to just the general form that I talked about earlier. Right, and of course, as we remember from above, a, b, and c have to be real numbers, and a can't be zero. Well, I could also look at it in vertex form, which, as the name implies, is actually going to give me the vertex of the parabola. So I've got this a times x minus h squared plus k. And the important thing about vertex form is that the point h, k is the vertex of the parabola. We'll talk more about that vertex in a minute. And the last form is intercept form, which, as you might imagine, gives the intercepts, the x-intercepts of the parabola. And you probably notice that <clears throat> this looks like uh, a factored polynomial. Well, if you remember, if you solve a polynomial equation and you factor it, it gives you the zeros, and the zeros are just the x-intercepts. So just as with that, from Algebra 2, p and q are the x-intercepts, uh, also called the zeros of the function. So you have three different forms of a quadratic. Well, we're going to focus on standard form just for now. I know you spent a lot of time in the investigation talking about quadratics in vertex form. Well, now we're going to talk about standard form. And in standard form, we can actually find the vertex, even though we're not given it explicitly. And we can start by finding the x-coordinate, and that's done using this opposite of b over 2a uh, equation. And it looks a bit like the quadratic formula. Uh, there's actually a way to prove that this is the way to do it, but you can't do that without um, a knowledge of calculus. So for now, we'll have to just take this at face value, accept it as true, trust me on this one, um, and when we come back to functions and calculus later on in the year, we can go back and talk about this. What's imper important for now is that the vertex lies on the axis of symmetry of the parabola. So this equation here will also help me find my axis of symmetry. And because it lies on the axis of symmetry and because it is the vertex, um, that point is also either the maximum or the minimum of the function. And the next question, of course, is how do I know which is which? Well, it depends on the concavity of the function, which is determined by the sine of a. Right, a is either positive or negative. I guess negative I wrote first, or positive. Right, if I consider two different parabolas, so it's a different color. If I, so here's one parabola, and here is my vertex. Well, this is concave up, right? It is opening up. And because its leading coefficient is positive, that's what makes it concave up. That also means that the vertex is, as you can see by looking at it, a minimum value or the minimum value of the uh, quadratic function. 
Well, if I do the same thing and I were to just flip this, I'll just copy and paste a new one. Yeah, it's a little bit squished, but I'll have to make it work. Maybe we can move this over. Yeah, all right, there we go. So if I were to take this and flip it over, hopefully I can still get it to touch my vertex here. There we go. Well, this is now concave down. And that's because A is negative. Right, the sine of A makes the uh, parabola either, either open up or down. And in this case, the vertex would be the maximum value for the parabola. So it all depends on the orientation of the parabola and the sine of A is what influences that. So let's look at an example. And I wanna look at the concavity of this function. Find the axis of symmetry of the vertex domain and range, um, as well as the vertex form of the function. So easy one to start, let's just start with the concavity. Again, I said easy one to start because all I'm gonna do is look at my leading coefficient. Negative two is obviously a negative number. And because my leading coefficient is negative, this function is concave down. I'm gonna have some kind of an orientation that looks like this. All right, well, let's dive into something a little bit meatier. We'll start by looking at the axis of symmetry. And as I said, because my vertex lies on the axis of symmetry, we can actually use that formula I gave you earlier to find the axis of symmetry. So we'll do this x equals opposite of b over 2a. And looking at my coefficients, right, we just get a, b, c from left to right. So b is 4, so I'd have negative 4. And then a is negative two, so two times negative two is also negative four, so x equals one. So my axis of symmetry lies on x equals one. Well, I can follow through with this to find the vertex. Uh, I guess I'll put it up here. I can follow through with this to find the vertex because I already know my hk, that h equals one because of the axis of symmetry. Well, to find k, I'm just gonna find what happens when I plug one into the function. So one squared is one, so I have negative two plus four plus one is three. And so my vertex is one, three. We'll kind of come back to this vertex throughout, but for now it's important to keep in the back of our minds that because we're concave down, this vertex is a maximum, right? This would be my vertex. And that is the maximum point of the function. Okay, well, domain is easy enough because this is a polynomial function. So there's nothing that I can plug in that would give me some kind of an undesirable or impossible result, right? I'm not dividing by zero or anything. So the set of real numbers is my domain for any polynomial function, and that is true here. The range is a little tricky because if I look at this graph, if I were to graph this, I guess I'll put it up here real quick, right, and I just find wherever one three happens to be, and I know that this is concave down, there's roughly a sketch of my graph. Well, what is the range? Well, I don't have, I'm gonna kind of draw in a line where this vertex sits. I don't have any function values above y equals three, right? This is y equals three. So my range is going to be all of the real numbers that are less than or equal to three, right? Because I want my range to be as exact as possible. I don't have anything beyond three, so I'm not gonna entertain myself with, concerning myself with um, anything greater than three. So my real numbers, or sorry, my range is gonna be all of the y's. Remember, we don't need to write in that they're real numbers because it's uh, assumed in this case as long as y is less than or equal to three. And that's the most important thing, right? I can't possibly make this equal four, make my function equal four. I can't possibly have something with a function value of four. My range is anything less than or equal to three. So fairly simple. Part D, to find the vertex form, we learned a couple different ways, right? In algebra two, we probably learned how to complete the square. Um, you could do that, <clears throat> it's a little time consuming, um, and we actually already have the vertex here, right? So if I start in with my general form, and this is something that I like to do, 
just to make sure I have all my ducks in a row. So if I start with my general form, and I know that my uh, vertex is 1, 3, so I'm going to go ahead and just plug that in. Well, I still need to know what A is. Well, if you remember when you learned how to complete the square, the first thing you did was factor out the leading coefficient. And that leading coefficient always kind of just stayed the way it was. right? Whatever you factored out is kind of what stayed there. So it is reasonable enough then to say that A is still negative 2. I don't have to do any sort of additional work. I don't have to plug in any points. I don't have to do any factoring. A is A is just always A. Right? This A is this A and always will be. And I did all of that without the help of a calculator. Well, for this next problem, we're going to start using our calculator a little bit because it's going to speed up the process a lot. A company's profits are modeled by this function given. On uh, X is the selling price. So I want to find the selling price that maximizes my profit, and I want to know what the maximum profit is. I could do this by hand, right? I could use my negative b over 2a to find the maximum selling price and then take the function value of that in order to find the maximum profit. But these are big numbers. That's a cumbersome thing. Um, if I've got my calculator, I might as well use it to the fullest extent possible. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. So in order to do this, uh, we need to graph the function. Well, it would be helpful if I actually knew about how wide to make my graph, because otherwise blindly guessing at the calculator window is going to waste a lot of time. So I'm going to start actually by using my opposite of b over 2a just to figure out about how big to make my calculator window. Sometimes zoom fit does not cooperate, so this is a little more accurate way. So 35 is the halfway point, right? Our vertex is the axis of symmetry, which is halfway. So 70 would bring me to the end of the parabola, so 100 should be a wide enough window. Um, I'm going to go to y equals, and I would enter in my function, which you can see I've already done. Um, and I'm just going to make a guess at my window here, so maybe 0 to 100 will be fine. Um, let's stick with the 50,000 for the y max for now and just see what happens. Hey, there we go. There's a ref. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be enough. Um, that you can see clearly where the peak is. So in order to do this on our GDC, super easy. Uh, we're going to go to second trace, which you can see we have the calc command here. And I want to find the maximum. So we're going to go to maximum. Uh, by the way, if you have to find the minimum, you're going to go to option number three instead. But the process is going to be exactly the same. So maximum. Whether it's maximum or minimum, I'm going to be prompted to set the left bound. So I'm going to just scoot over here. Um, this is approximately my vertex, right? I can eyeball where the middle is. I can eyeball where that peak is. But because I want the left bound, I'm going to move just a little bit to the left. Um, I'm trying to tell the calculator that somewhere in the range I'm about to set, um, which I'll do for right bound as well, somewhere in that range is my maximum. Look here. Don't guess. I don't know why they prompt us to guess. I'm not sure what the point is. I've only seen it mess up results. So we're just going to click right through guess, and there's my maximum. Um, rounding error is pretty normal uh, on this calculator. This is effectively 35, which is what we calculated by hand, which is great. And then my Y gives me my actual maximized profit, right? So selling things, selling this item at $35 will maximize my profit. Um, and I'll earn $12,500 with that maximized profit. So super easy, just using the second calc min or max, depending on what you're being asked to look for. And then the process is exactly the same uh, with the right bound, left bound.